Okay, good morning and uh, welcome to the first lecture in 2021. And uh, really, I wish you all a very happy new year and, uh, of course, a successful new year. Today, we'll be talking about sampling theory. This is uh, something that's more of an engineering subject uh, rather than pure mathematical subject. But as I allowed you to um, have this accounted, to have this lecture accounted for numerical analysis, I really want to look a little bit into um, implementation and sampling, which are very absolutely vital aspects of computerized tomography. Um, I hope you already had uh, a look at least at the notes of uh, the uh, sample solution for the exercise that uh, I did. And uh, because this motivates what I'm going to tell you now. Okay, um, let me go a little bit into the discussion of uh, that exercise. And then we took, I think we took F to be compactly supported. I will now drop that requirement. And uh, I will assume that we have a function F just in S. And uh, what we did there in the exercise was uh, we took, oh, let me look for my mouse cursor again. Ah, there it is. Okay, let's uh, take any L in, um, and by the way, I'm taking, I'm doing this in n-dimensional space. Uh, if you have any problems with that, then just take it 1D. It's exactly the same, but since it's the same, I did it in uh, n-dimensional space here. Okay, let's uh, look at the Fourier transform of that function f at a point 2 pi L, where L is an uh, integer number in, in the Zn. Then this is defined as 2 pi over, oops, 2 pi over n over 2. Let me just correct that. Minus is not good. 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi n to the 2. Integral e to the minus 2 pi i l x, because this is evaluated at uh, 2 pi l f of x dx. That's just the definition of the Fourier transform. And uh, now let's assume that we can only sample f at some discrete points. And uh, let's assume that the spacing between the, between the uh, points is 1, which is quite large. So let's assume that we can only compute f uh, as f of k, or let's assume that we measured only f of k for k um, integer. Okay, so this is this, uh, uh, then we can do the trapezoidal rule as we did in the exercise. And uh, we get an approximation for that integral. The prefactor is the same. There's some h to the n or something, but since the spacing is one, that vanishes here. And so this should be roughly equal to the sum of all k in Zn e to the minus 2 pi i l k f of k. And of course, that's only an approximation. And we assume that approximation is not very good because the spacing between sample points is very large. Okay, so, uh, but uh, now we find that uh, since L and K are integer, this over here is always one. And we find that this is the same as one over two pi n to the two, sum over all K F of K. And uh, now something strange happened because we have an L on the left-hand side, but we do not have that L on the right-hand side. So that means for every L, we get the same approximation here. And that was the result of the exercise. And uh, we already suspected that we're not really, um, um, we're not really uh, computing an approximation to F hat of two pi L, but uh, that we are summing up all the contributions of all the uh, f of uh, um, f hat of two pi l. So it's something like the sum over all l f hat of two pi l. That's really what this sum over here approximates. Okay, so our, we suspected that the sum over all l f hat of two pi l is roughly is an estimate for uh, one over two pi to the um, n over two sum over all k in the n f of k or the other. 
Okay, um, that sounds very fishy, right? I mean, uh, we had a very large spacing, and uh, so that will not be exact. I had a lot of hand waving, and um, probably you won't think that this is really a good estimate. I think it's really a miracle that um, this is not an estimate. It's exactly the same. And uh, that's Poisson's summation formula, which states that the sum over all f, uh, L, f hat of 2 pi L, that's exactly what we had here, is exactly the same as the sum over 2 pi to the n to the 2, sum over all f of k. So this is not an estimate. It's exactly the same. So applying the trapezoidal rule over here gives us exact values. There may be a very good physical reason behind that, but I still think um, it's absolutely a miracle and I don't really understand what that means. Okay, um, if you look into the li literature and also we'll be using this in a slightly different form, um, if we set g of x as f of h times x times e to the minus i x h xi with fixed h and fixed xi, then using our computation rules for the Fourier transform, uh, we can now use this over here for the g. And uh, we find that uh, on the right hand side, we of course have, uh, well, this. Uh, this is just uh, the sum over all g of k, which we have over here. And uh, using the computation rules on the left-hand side, uh, we find that there's an equivalent formula for this one. So this is the form that we're using the Poisson formula on, so that, uh, that we'll be uh, using for the Poisson formula. And again, you see if I uh, take the 1 over h to the n and move it to the right-hand side, then this means if, one, if I take all of these over here and um, expand them using Poisson's, uh, using the trapezoidal rule, then the right-hand side appears. And uh, so it's in, again, it just says uh, that uh, you that the trapezoidal, trapezoidal rule is exact. And it's not only exact for h equal 1, as I did it above here, but it's for, but it's correct for any spacing h and also for any shift xi. The proof is uh, surprisingly um, simple. And uh, I try to make it even simpler by proving the first form over here directly. I confess I failed. Maybe there's a way of proving that directly. Um, more or less what I'm doing here is I'm proving the second form. Okay, um, so let's um, define g of xi, a uh, function g of xi as the sum over all l in the n f hat of xi plus 2 pi l. And uh, note that for xi equals 0, then this is just the left-hand side of the equation we would like to prove. Also note that this is 2 pi periodic, of course. Um, so if it is 2 pi periodic, it's in S. Um, um, no, it's, it's not in S, but uh, it's, a two, it's uh, at least continuous. Uh, so uh, we can take its Fourier expansion as a Fourier series, and we can write it in the form g of xi is sum over all k in Zn. Again, if you don't like that, take n equals to 1. It doesn't make a difference. g k hat e to the minus i xi, uh, i xi k. Okay, and uh, the Fourier coefficients are readily computed as g k hat which is 1 over 2 pi to the n, integral minus pi pi to the n, g of xi, e to the i, k xi, d xi. Just the normal form for the Fourier coefficients. Um, now um, we, in, we plug in the definition of g, and this is nothing but 1 over 2 pi to the n, sum over all l. I already took this over here, so it's actually just the integral of minus pi to pi to the n, sum over all L, which I already took out, f hat of xi plus 2 pi L, so that's exactly the definition of g. And uh, in the exponent over here, I add to the, to the xi a 2 pi L, which does not make any difference because k 
is integer and e to the i 2 pi l k is just one x i. Okay, so this was just inserting the definition of g. Now let's look at what we really have here. Um, I set xi equal to xi plus 2 pi l, then uh, you find that, um, well, what, what are we actually integrating here? That's what I should ask. What are we actually integrating here? Well, we're integrating over minus pi to the pi. Then we're integrating from uh, pi to 3 pi. Uh, and so on. So actually what we're doing here in that summation is we're integrating over all of our n. So this is nothing but the integral over all of our n and psi plus two pi L becomes psi. So this is integral over, our, uh, over Rn, f hat of psi e to the i k psi d psi. Okay, now uh, let's end of course, uh, and also split up that one to the uh, one over two pi to the n and one over two pi to the n over two times one over two pi to the n over two. Okay, now let's look at what we have here. This here over here is the inverse Fourier transform. It's the inverse Fourier transform of the Fourier transform of F evaluated at the point K. So this over here is nothing but F of K. Okay, so gk hat is 1 over 2 pi n over 2 times f of k. Okay, now let's go back to our definition of g. And let me, yeah, yes, now I can have both of these. Um, on the other, other uh, on, on one hand side, we had that g of xi is nothing but the sum over all l, f of 2 pi l for xi equals 0. So this is just this one over here, and we take the first definition over here. Now, um, taking the Fourier expansion over here, we have that for xi equals 0, then this is the same as the sum over all k, g k hat. g k hat, we just computed, and we find that the sum over all l, f hat of 2 pi l is the same of 2 pi to the minus n over 2, sum over all k, f of k, and that's exactly what we wanted to prove. Okay, I can only stress that for me, this is really surprising. Get a little bit bigger. Um, this is really surprising. I really think it's a miracle. And um, you will see that we can very well make use of that for implementation. And if, in fact, it will be the basis for all our analysis of algorithms. And uh, yeah. We will start discussing that in the next section.